Greetings, brethren, sister. My name is Koblado. I've been with African uh, Africans since the inception, which was 2006. That's the first time I got to meet Earl Romani. I've been ruling ever since. I really don't know what, I don't have much to say. But if I really want, well, it's about Pan Africanism, so I really don't have a lot to say. Uh, in my struggle as a Pan Africanist, I, I, I experienced, I, I can say my first organization was the June 4th movement, led by Flight Lieutenant and Jerry John Rollins. I was then a student. So when it was more like students against military rule, and Rollins came along and helped us out, it was a revolution. That was my first Pan African. It, was a, it, wasn't, it was just a Ghanaian revolution. It wasn't Pan African. Then I went on, met some friends in London, and I met the Rastafarian movement. Went through all that, came back. Then I joined the uh, All African People's Revolutionary Party, which was an offshoot of the Black Panthers. The Prime Minister of the Black Panthers at that time was Stokely Carmichael, who later on became part of the spirit. And formed an organization called the All African People's Revolutionary Party. It was formed in Guinea, when our first president was in exile. It was hosted by Sekou Touré at the time. And that's when Stokely Carmichael and Al Kwame Touré and the Soros came to join Sekou Touré at that time. It was there that he wrote his he wrote his book, The Handbook of Revolutionary Law, which was and that's where he mentioned the all African organization. A sort of because at that time the the revolutionary struggle led by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was still on. Oh yeah, yeah. You see? So there was a sort of at that time you had um, countries like Zimbabwe, Rhodesia at that time. We had three types of three people fighting for freedom. Um, um, the one who just Mugabe, then there was a Joshua, then there was a Bishop Sump, with three of them. I, was, I remember as a kid in the 60s. It was long, about three decades of struggle in that part of the world. Anyway, so after that, I got to meet Kwame Ture. It was then the my, my people here in Ghana, they don't know much about the diaspora struggle, which I do. But I grew up in England for a while, but then my primary education there for seven years. So I understood, I knew about the Panthers, because you know, the UK and UK, USA are very close. So we used, to, so we used to watch it on television all the time. Especially, I, I could always remember Angela, Angela, Angela Davis. And I'm like, I'm about seven years old, I'm under eight years old. I was like, what are they doing to this system? What in this system? Every system got news. She was on with the black man, you know, with the black man around with the guns and all that kind of thing. So I remember all that when I was a kid, so when I came back. And here, lo and behold, at the age of like, uh, my 30s or whatever, then I meet Kwame Ture. Wow, that was, I felt good. You know, like, wow. And then I met Akbar of the Nation of Islam and stuff like that. So that's talking about Pan Africanism. Then I moved on. I hooked up with Hebrew Israelites, not, not to African Minds United. That's Dr. Malana's group. He was more into this schematic language and stuff like that. That didn't wasn't enough for me in terms of what I really wanted to see. All throughout my life was a Pan African Then I moved on and I came across another brother who recruited me to the APRP but he's pulled out to start his own. They wanted me to help him with his organization called Pani, which I helped. I helped you know, edit this book and all that. And then, you know, we fell out. But through him, I got to know Bomani. So this is my 10th uh, Pan-African organization I've worked with. So I've gone through throughout the pages, you know, from organization to organization. And this is the kind of organization I really want. 
it's practical. You know what I'm saying? People coming home to see the land and do what you have to do. It's not books, but which is very important. In consciousness, Mao, Mao, Mao Zedong of China, Mao Zedong, he said there's three steps of consciousness. Perception, theory, and practice. Perception, perception is posters. Posters, television, you know, signals. That's just a perception. The theory is the books. And the, the practice is doing it. So when you do these three things, it goes on like that and like that and like that. You see what I'm saying? But most organizations are all read, 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 study, 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 and they, they the scholars and all that kind of thing, but they don't do the practical stuff. And this organization, as far as I'm concerned, has been the most practical organization I've ever joined and worked with. I've worked with him for 14 years, and man, and Bamal is the man. I mean, he's like, he's always, and that's the kind of person I love moving with. That you know? kind of militant team, you know, that kind of thing. So that's how I got to meet Bomani, and that's why I'm a tour guide, tour assistant to him, and that's it. So that's it. That's how we came to meet. That's how we've all come to meet. So all I can say is that I wanted to say something about the struggle. But I have studied, I have studied Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Sekou Ture, Elijah Muhammad, W. Du Bois, Marcus Garvey, Sheikh Antidio, and Amir Cabra. And I just finished reading Amir Cabra last year. And it's not easy. The struggle has not been easy for Africa for a very long time. You see. And what I, what I found fascinating about the Portuguese Guinea independence was the way Amir Cabral was very different. He, did, he died before he won their independence. He, died, he was assassinated. But he really was, I mean, you should read about him, Amir Cabral. And there's another thing we're having, we're having problems. With W. Du Bois Center, they're trying to do something like take it away, take his body away and try and put some museum there. So if there's anything you can do over in the States and make people aware that we want the W. Du Bois Center saved. It was right from an onset. When I used to go to WB Boys Center and the George Padmore Library, you could have conscious books over there. We used to have students sending books and stuff like that. But the books that you really need for revolutionary consciousness, you don't find them. You know, like Kwame um, you know, revolutionary writers, you don't find them. They're just vanishing. So recently I went to George Padmore. This like these revolutionary writers were all over the place. There was Sheikh Antidi up there, all over the place. His books were all over the place. Uh, Amir Cabral was there. You know, you know, great writers were there. But when you go back, you, you, the books vanish. It took the lady about 40 minutes to find some nice pamphlet, uh, 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 biography of Amir Cabral. So that's another problem. We can help save our libraries and stuff like that. So please, I want to thank you all for coming, taking this step, coming down with this COVID business and all that. And it shows your determination and love for the continent. All I can say is keep on pushing on, fight for what we believe. Keep on, you know. I know it looks very difficult, but that's how these white people do it. They just go, take the land. Fight when, when it's rough, it's not rough. They kill, they slaughter, they take it. You don't have any excuses when you're coming from somebody's land. And this is your land that we've taken away from. So come back, take your thing. So you're most welcome.